I think with the Grand Master, Wong Kar Wai puts the art back into martial art filmmaking. For people who don't know Wong Kar Wai, he wears dark glasses all the time, all the time, all the time. I mean, Wong Kar Wai looks like he's a figure from a John Woo movie. He wait for the double guns to come out. There's also something about him that wants to invest more in characters than in the action. And I think he found in Grand Master that perfect marriage of both. Walter Hill says in his movies, action is character. And for Ip Man, it becomes that after a while as well. For him, those movements say who and what he is. Wong Kar Wai creates worlds, worlds that run such a wide spectrum. It runs from this real high aesthetic, formal, epic kind of thing to these moments of just almost verite. There's something swoony about his movies, you know, from Frank Sinatra to Justin Timberlake. There's always this sort of sense of being lost and being slightly off your feet. It's like a painting. Every moment, every scene, every frame, is like a painting. Who does that? Wong Kar Wai. Working with him is always a never-ending story. You never know when the movie is going to finish. It's like every scene again, again, and again. <laughs> Until I can handle no more, I always talk to him on set. Uh, I said, Kawai, I cannot shoot anymore. <laughs> I'm going to die. You only get my body, not, not no soul. <laughs> this is what I discovered. You first have to get to know Wang Kawai, and he has to get to know you. When the mutual understanding happens, then the magic begins. I think we're seeing this film as being back in his wheelhouse of his early work. I, I'm thinking of As Tears Go By, which was the film that led people to call Wong Kar Wai China's Martin Scorsese.